What's up, guys? Skitter Rampage here. So, oh my god. Ah! There's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. And um, so I'll just talk about my experience at the movie theater first and um, how I feel about it, and then I'll go on to the spoilers, all right? Okay, so, you know, I was a little bit late when I first got there. Um, I was like five minutes late. It was already like playing a little bit. Um, so I was kind of bummed out. I don't think I missed much, though. But, um,. I know, uh, I, yeah, I don't think I missed much, so that was good, and um, it, the theater was packed, it was packed, guys, like, packed beyond belief, um, I'm, normally, I don't see theaters packed that much, because I don't go to movies that aren't that popular half the time, like, most of the movies I see, uh, I guess not everyone likes, so I don't, normally, I don't like packed theaters like that, but, you know, it was like, we're all harnessing our inner nerds there, I don't, I don't know how a better way to explain it, but it was awesome, uh, movie phenomenal. Um, you know, the uh, guys next to you just hear it. Like, I really feel like everyone in there was connecting together, just like the audience, just with the movie, and we we're all connecting together, all laughing together, all clapping at crazy scenes, all like, no way. Um, oh, oh, you know, it's just like it felt, you know, normally half the time it's just quiet in there, and you laugh at certain, you hear a couple people laughing at a funny movie, but this was just, you know, you got humor, you got the banter between Vegeta and Goku, and it's just, it was, it was amazing, uh, it, just the experience of it, that was my first time being at, like, an anime type thing in public, really, and it was amazing, it really was, the whole, you know, just seeing so many fans and so many, just people being so excited and, uh, laughing, you know, it's just like, Things like we should be doing, really. Um, I don't want to turn this into a political thing. But, yeah, no, guys, the movie was phenomenal, guys. Um, from start to finish, funny parts, sad parts. Um, just so, like, there's, like, one big emotional part that almost made me, like, ball. Like, seriously. It wasn't crazy sad, but it was enough to get you there. And you're like, oh, man. But um, just awesome, awesome. I loved it. Everything about the movie, I'd see it again, worth every dime, the 15 bucks I spent on the ticket, um, and like the two in candy, uh, <laughs> but no, and I recommend not getting a drink or anything or getting it because they don't make you have to pee or holding it. If you can hold your bladder, then you're perfect because you don't want to miss anything. You don't. There's no, there's no bad part in the movie. Um, well, eh. there's no bad part in the movie, but there's like of like certain characters they didn't introduce that I would like to like uh discuss about it but um anyway so that's pretty much like my experience um you know normally I don't like being that close to people but it was an awesome experience I felt like I was in a room full of just friends you know just friends enjoying a movie so it was pretty cool even though I did not know any of them um, no after scene credits either if you guys are wondering about that uh, I waited trust me um I waited so long, the guy up next to me, he waited as well, he got up, left, he actually left his wallet on the seat, so I had to run out there and go get him, so he was pretty grateful, and then, um, so, spoilers, 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 all right, so where do we start, um, and leave the video, if, um, or, you know, if you want to see spoilers, if you're going to see it anyway, I don't know if you guys are waiting, but just want to tell you guys spoilers, so nobody gets mad at me, so, anyway, spoiler time, so, it begins with, uh, you know, Frieza going, you know, King Cold, uh, uh, Captain Cold. What? I forget his name all the time. I think it's King Cold, but um, Frieza's father, we'll go with that. He um, gives away pretty much the Sands and the whole Frieza army, Frieza Force or whatever, Cold Force, uh, makes it the Frieza Force um, and then puts him in charge. A kid, he was like freaking nine in charge of the whole planet, so, you know, they were pretty mad, you know, Frieza, whoa, just at that age, he was like, he put on a scouter, that scouter really helped him, because there was, like, snipers trained on him everywhere with blasters, and he just, poo, 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 he just destroyed them, decimated, he was like, basically, like, anyone else, everyone's like, oh, he's very impressive, um, so, yeah, then we get, then we see Broly in the pod, and Vegeta in the pod, you know, them growing up, and, you know, um, v King Vegeta, a little upset, um, about Broly being stronger than Vegeta at the time, his uh, latent ability, like, and then they redid it, and it was, like, smaller, I guess he was mad, maybe, maybe when he heard Goku's cries, and maybe they moved Goku, I'm not too sure, um, but, and also, Kakarot was not a trigger word for him in this movie, so I found that pretty interesting as well, um, also, one thing I will say before going on, 
Actually, I'll leave that at the end. Um, but yeah, they the only other person they put in was Piccolo and Bulma and Beerus and Whis. Those were really the only other characters. Oh, Trunks and Goten, but they were in there for like a matter of a minute. So um, I'll go over some funny parts as well. But the one of the sad parts was when Bardock came back and he realized he was like, all the whole Frieza force was there. They called all the Sands back to the planet from their missions. Most of them, at least with Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, and the other ones were off planet, but um, a couple. But uh, Paragus and Broly. Paragus actually got sent, or his Broly actually got sent off the planet because of uh, King Vegeta because he was afraid of his power or what it would become or monstrous or destroy the planet. So he sent him off and then Paragus went to save him. They got stranded on the planet, the desolate planet that they were on. I forget what it's called. Um, then Bardock was, felt really uneasy about Frieza being there. So he, um, so he sent Goku off, which that was a sad moment. It really was, uh, just, you know, seeing his mom heartbroken and just upset, seeing Bardock care, you know, you normally don't see him care. He's kind of a fierce warrior, but he was like, he really cared about his Goku there uh Kakarot he really wanted him to uh survive so he sent him off and he was right and it was kind of crazy because no one helped him when Frieza sent down his uh death ball no one helped him Bardock was up there alone fighting and they just all let themselves get decimated so that was definitely interesting um really sad to see them all go uh but definitely when Goku was going it was it was very sad and I I it, it got to me a little bit it was like oh the feels no the whole you know the the crowd was like oh man come on now why are you doing that to us um then we got then it like goes into the um goes into the future you know like a little timeline and showing all you know goku fighting raditz and frieza and all the enemies and everything um then you go present day goku and vegeta fighting on an island bulma built like usual she's building extraordinary things like that for them to fight so they wouldn't destroy any cities <clears throat> And then they realized that, you know, I'm just, you know, there's just, it was some pretty cool parts. I'm kind of like going through the movie the best I can, as fast as I can. But they realized that the Dragon Balls were stolen. This is kind of keen. Um, Bul Goku was like, why were you collecting the Dragon Balls anyways? Because Frieza's men stole the Dragon Balls. And she was like, um, she didn't want to tell him. And she finally told him, she's like, to make myself look five years younger. He was like, he was like, oh, because you look so old all the time. <laughs> Goku, you idiot. And then he was like. She was like, oh, Whis was like, why don't you do it, say, by, like, 10 years? She goes, then everybody would notice. And that was really funny. That made the whole crowd laugh, um, including myself. Uh, and then Goku was like, oh, so you've been doing this all the, or since the whole time or whatever. And that was funny. And then she, uh, she, like, sped up on the spaceship as they were going to, like, some Iceland, ice place or whatever um to get the last dragon ball before Frieza's men did but they ended up beating him it was kind of funny too because they thought they could get away they're like they couldn't read their power levels and they're like oh my god these are the two and they try to fly away and vegeta just went pew <laughs> just pew and they fell down and then he picked it up and goku was like hey you need to give us dragon balls right now and he was like He's just trying to intimidate them, but he looked ridiculous because we all know his character, but they were scared. They were like, look at him. Look at that fierce look on him. Uh, that was hilarious. And then Frieza ended up, his men, his uh, guy asked him, he was like, what are you going to use your wish for? He was like, Frieza, he was like guessing. And then the girl was like, I know what he's going to wish for. He's going to, he's going to wish for uh, to be taller. And then they were like, Frieza got a little mad. He was like, well, she is right. I would like to be five centimeters taller. <laughs> And he was like, why don't you say, like, get five feet taller? You could, you could just go to your second form. He was like, I want to be taller in my base form and uh, my f golden form. He was like, uh, plus, everyone would notice if I went five feet taller. It was just, you know, funny little jokes. Frieza joking around. I really thought more would happen with Frieza. I thought he was going to get a new form. He didn't. Um... Then we go to the Broly battle when he first showed up. You know, Vegeta. One of the best moments was Vegeta going Super Saiyan God mode, guys. Whoa. Like, that was insane. After he was getting, uh, he started getting beat by Broly. Super, He went Super Saiyan, then he beat Broly. And then he got sick of it because uh, Broly was getting more mad. So he, uh, he, uh, and by the way, Broly was on Frieza's side because Frieza, like, saved him in a way. So, um, and Paragus wanted his revenge, so he's using Broly as a tool, which was kind of sad as well. Um, but it gets better. Don't worry.
And then, you know, Vegeta went god mode on the crowd went nuts. I went nuts. That was amazing. Um, exactly what I expected it to be him making his entrance. It was amazing. Uh, you know, he they didn't really sound normal, though. They didn't sound like their actual selves, which was surprising. I know I'm sure Christopher uh, Sabat or Chris Sabat uh, Sabat. I don't know how to say his name, but I'm sure he voiced Vegeta, but he didn't sound and he sounded a little weird. And they did the art a little differently. I liked it, but it was a little different. It really was. It was noticeable than like super. And it was a little more clean cut. And this one, they weren't as ripped, like how as ripped. And they were just kind of like, they're a little more bulkier and like lean in a way, but they weren't like ripped like they normally are. And, um, but yeah. And then Broly soon decimated him in red God form. But one of the coolest things that I noticed, just a little detail that you noticed, this was the first time I swear that I've ever seen Vegeta's hair just move like that. When he was going at him, it, you just saw his hair like ripple up. In like in his god form, his sleek, slim, uh, like toned god form, and it just it was the coolest thing to me for some reason out of the movie because you I feel like I've never seen Vegeta's hair just wish through the like wind going through it like you know like I'm about to mess you up when I get over there. He's just like going super fast, so it was awesome. Um, you know, Broly once he decimated Broly, uh, Broly, you know, he got back up. He was angry. Um, Paragus thought it was over. He tried to control him. Did not work. Uh, Broly got more mad. And then I think he did his, like, first transformation it was. Um, but then Goku finally got into the fight. And he he's just, oh, my God, Goku in his base form. You know, he's kind of taunting him a little bit. Goku was just excited, too. But he was kind of beating him up a little bit in his uh, base form, Goku, um, rather than Vegeta. So that was definitely interesting. Um, and then Goku finally... I feel like he went Super Saiyan 2 because I saw the electricity and everything. So it looked like Super Saiyan 2, but I think it was Super Saiyan 1. Um, then he went God Form, which was uh, dope. Like, I never used the word dope, but it was it was dope, guys. It was amazing. Um, and then he went, he went blue, Super Saiyan blue, which was off the chain. And actually, I never even showed you guys my card over here, did I? Um, in the video, yeah, because it's, I mean, I guess it's in the thumbnail as well, but look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's what they gave me, um, after I le exited the theater. I love when they give you little things, even a postcard. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, when he went blue, it was kind of weird because he, we had a glimpse of ultra instinct, like a glimpse of it. And we all thought he was going ultra instinct. We all thought he was going out there like that he was just gonna decimate broly just you know just uh, like <laughs> i'm over here <laughs> nope i'm over here and it's just, it was amazing um and he went he, he went blue you know the crowd was going nuts like i they were screaming because they thought he was gonna go ultra instinct i've never seen a crowd go nuts in a movie theater like this phenomenal amazing reactions it's just awesome and um it, it was nuts like guys it's crazy uh and then when Vegeta was getting pummeled by Broly, actually, was one point I wanted to bring up from the title as well. They did first person, or they did a first person view of it, like Broly punching him. It was just like it was like the camera was inside Broly's face, and he just boom, boom, boom. It was actually, you know, at first I was like, uh, I prefer just seeing them fight, like seeing them throw the punches, but uh, back and forth in like a wide view, but um, or third person view, I guess it would be, and then, but no. It was it was actually really cool. I like how they did it. It actually later on, like more into when he was decimating Vegeta, it like kind of got me. I was like, "Damn, this is cool." Um, and it was just it was it was cool. It really was. I don't I don't know why I liked it so much. It was like it, I guess it was just different from what they normally do, and it was amazing. You know, everyone you see in the crowd is like they're going to win first person. Oh, this is about to get crazy. <laughs> it's just, you just hear the crowd going nuts. Um, and then they started getting decimated more and more. And uh, when they realized, when Goku realized he couldn't beat him, and then Vegeta joined in the fight, and they both realized they couldn't beat him even at blue, uh, blue form. They couldn't, they couldn't beat him. So what Goku did was they did, bro. Oh my God, guys, they did a dual Kamehameha wave and a Gallic gun. He was like, you know what? I wrote down exactly what they said in my phone just because I wanted to tell you guys exactly what they said. Where is it? Um, he said, let's go, Vegeta. And then um, he goes, I'm way ahead of you. And then they did a mix of the Kamehameha wave 
and the Gallic gun. And it was amazing. It was so, it looked beautiful. Beautiful, guys. It was amazing. I loved it so much. And then um, after that, they uh, ran at Frieza and he was like, I think he said tag, you're it. And then he took Vegeta and used uh, instant transmission and Broly just started pummeling Frieza. And when I say pummeling, destruction, okay? He was like a god of destruction on Frieza's face. Just punching back and forth. Um, they went back, they went over to Piccolo and, you know, they had to, they were figuring out how to do the fusion dance. Vegeta was hesitant. He was like, I'd rather die to Broly. And then he was like, Broly's going to destroy Bulma and Bola, your daughter. He was like, how would you feel? And then he's like, he's blushing. He was like, how dare you try to um, trick me into or whatever. But <laughs> it's just funny. So they eventually did it and it actually took them three tries because the first time their fingers were off. So they turned into fat uh, Gogeta. Gogeta is one of my favorite transformations, if you guys didn't know, next to Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So they turned in a fat one. So they had to, it was kind of funny how they did it. Because, so they had to wait 30 minutes to unfuse. And then it just switches over to Frieza getting pummeled by Broly again. And then they did it again. And then they ended up turning into anorexic Gogeta, which was, he was just really skinny in his face. He was like, oh. And then, um,. And then it goes back to Frieza, and he was like, I will not stand for this, getting pummeled. So he went to gold form, still getting pummeled. Um, and then they finally got it right. Gogeta came, and then he went Super Saiyan, destroying Broly. And then I guess that still wasn't enough, so they went Super Saiyan. Got Super Saiyan Gogeta. I never thought I'd see the day. Never, like, guys, did we ever think Dragon Ball would get to this point of the gods and everything? No, we did not. We thought Kid Buu was it we thought omega shinron was it but it wasn't it was like wild guys the movie was amazing um the ending you know all the end the ending scene the ending scene they uh they actually used the dragon balls for some of frieza soldiers one of the girls that broly was kind of fond of and the guy that were, they were nice to him and they used the dragon balls to save broly after um they were doing a com goku and or gogeta was doing a command may wave that would have killed broly most likely um, they had him, they had Shinron transport him back to the planet where, the desolate planet where he grew up on. And then they went over there and they, yes, they decided to live with him, um, because he could protect them from Frieza for betraying Frieza. So, um, then Goku, he used instant transmission. She was like, the girl was like, how are we going to survive? We only brought like 50 days worth of food. And Goku came and he was like, hi guys, can I come in the cave? And they're like, how did you get here? You know, instant transmission is a hell of a thing. But uh, Broly was like, oh, like up front, like he was going to fight him again. And he was like, I'm not here to fight. Oh, guys. Oh, my God. I missed it. The one thing that I missed. When he, when Goku went Super Saiyan God mode on Broly, Broly, he trapped him in like a ball of energy somehow. I've never seen Goku do something like this. He was like just, he was playing, it was like playing cards with Broly and he, Goku was decimating him. It's like, it's like, a, I don't even know. It was insane. So he was like holding Broly there. And then, you know, he just, he was talking to him. He was just trying to get him to calm down. He was like, it's okay. You don't have to fight anymore. They're not, I won't like essentially in the terms, I won't let them hurt you or whatever. I won't let them be mean to you anymore. Kind of, that's kind of like along the lines of what he's saying. I don't really remember word for word, but he was like, you don't have to fight anymore. We're not, I, we don't want to fight. Um, this is a peaceful planet. And, um, I guess Broly like snapped out of it for a second. He was listening, but then he got, then he couldn't control it anymore. His anger. And cause the collar was off and then he just, then he, he overpowered Goku in God mode. His green energy was just over Goku's red aura. And he just, oh my God, he did what the Hulk and Avengers did to Loki and just body slammed him just back and forth, just over. And Goku was decimated until he went blue and then they did the thing to Frieza, which was hilarious. But the end scene was pretty much it. Uh, Frieza didn't want didn't want to fight. He just went back to his normal form after Broly left. He was like, "I'll be back." But um, the end scene was uh, they went. Goku went to him in the cave, and he was like, "You're a strong fighter." And he brought them some capsule, some little capsule things with food and a house. He was like, he was like, um, "I want to come back here every now and then." And he goes. Uh, he said, I'll bring stuff, you know, as long as you just let me fight with you or train with you, Broly. He was going to train with Broly and just fight because he's strong. He was like, um, I knew I couldn't beat you alone or whatever. He was like, it got to that point where I thought I was going to use all my energy. 
and uh, he was like, he was, he said, he said verbatim, you never, he thought, I, he, eh, I can't talk, but he, Goku thought he was at his peak of power. He really thought he was at his peak, but seeing Broly opened him up to a whole new like sand level. And he was like, I want to spar with you and I want to teach you a few things. And then he goes, they go, wait, well, what's your name before he uses instant transmission? Most iconic thing ever in Dragon Ball Z history. He said, my name, uh, my friends call me Goku. Or he he goes, my name's Goku. But uh, Broly, you can call me Kakarot. Then it cuts out. Oh, and the whole crowd was like, what? The first time he's ever let just told someone to call him Kakarot. And Kakarot wasn't a trigger word for Broly, I guess. He wasn't really like triggered or not. He just couldn't control his power. Um, so it was amazing. Now, some characters I would have liked to see is Gohan, you know, going to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Broly maybe. Uh, you know, just seeing more characters, because, you know, it gets repetitive seeing, you know, the big guys, Goku and Vegeta taking on everyone. Um, because Gohan took on Broly in the uh, Mecha Broly, or I forget what it's called, Bio Broly movie. He took him on in that mo movie. Um, but, yeah, guys, uh, the movie's phenomenal. I give it a 50 out of a million, or I, that's actually a horrible rating, isn't it? I give it a million out of 50. <laughs> a million out of a million. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Tell me down below what you think of the movie if you've seen it, if you're watching this review. Um, tell me if you're excited if you are seeing if you're watching this. And, yeah, sorry this is a long review, but a lot to go over. Amazing parts. But, anyways, I'll see you guys later. See you guys, uh, see you guys in the next one. See you guys. Bye. I can't talk.